Hi everyone. Today we're going to ask a very interesting question. What happened on that day, 13,000 years ago, when all the mammoths on Earth were destroyed? What cataclysmic event wiped them all from the Earth? Now, there are a number of theories on this. We don't really know what happened one way or another. But we have to look at all the options. Otherwise, anyway, time for you to decide. Sit back and watch and enjoy. In conventional terms, there seems to have been some sort of rapid climate change, a cooling, about 12,000 years ago, which interrupted a period of increasing warmth. This period, called the Younger Dryas, rapidly returned the Earth to a thousand years of ice. We had one of the biggest temperature drops in history, 50 degrees centigrade in some places. This period seems to have been one of mass extinction. Thanks to spectacular imagery of dinosaurs, it doesn't receive the same attention as that extinction of 65 million years ago. Yet, this extinction seems to have allowed humans to become the dominant large animals on Earth. Mammoths were quickly encased in permafrost before they had a chance to rot. Something happened with remarkable speed. We might speculate on what caused this. There seems to have been a cometary impact. The Carolina Lakes have been suggested as impact craters left over from this event. The comet impact caused or was associated with weather disturbance. After massive impacts, there occurred a deluge from superheated water returning to Earth. Mammoths and other animals were forced to herd together on the high ground to escape the flood waters. Thousands of other animals were washed away and smashed together. There is also a black layer of soot associated with this layer, perhaps caused by the fires which engulfed the earth, burning everything the floodwaters could not touch. There are, however, some anomalies which make the comet impact theory a little more complicated, perhaps even hard to swallow. It would seem that modern geology at this stage does not provide all the answers. The main anomaly centers around the fact that the mammoth is a tropical animal, not an ice animal. The younger Dryas was apparently no warmer than today, yet animals are now trapped in ice, still frozen in the cold aftermath of some cataclysmic event. Quite simply, the northern parts of the world, including Siberia, seem to have been much warmer than today, to the extent they were able to support tropical life. We therefore have a great mystery on our hands which conventional science has not yet resolved. How is it that a tropical animal survived and thrived in the icy depths of Siberia, eating tropical plants? Orthodox ideas do not at this stage provide us a satisfactory answer. This has not stopped people from making some very unorthodox suggestions. Let's look at some facts. Firstly, it seems that either continents moved around, or the Earth's axis shifted considerably, allowing warm temperatures in tropical latitudes. In fact, the Earth must have been on a very different axis 600 million years ago, when the alleged snowball Earth occurred, where ice formed in the equator and advanced towards the poles. This seems to imply that regions of the equator were once the poles. We also know that tropical plants grew in northern Greenland. Lonely Spitsbergen of the far north has several industries. These are tourism, coal mining and research. There are no trees on Spitsbergen, a land of ice. Where did the coal come from? It is of the Jurassic period. Among coal fossils are those of tropical fruits. Evergreen plants can no longer be supported in a land of darkness. Now, these facts describe Earth tens to hundreds of millions of years ago. But here we have a dilemma. Why should a similar scenario be compatible with events of only 10,000 years ago? Sudden shifts in the Earth's rotation by as yet unknown forces may have dramatically sculpted our world in very recent times. 
before the advent of theories of continental drift, followed by plate tectonics. The New York Times in 1901 had a solution. Quote, A change in the Earth's axis of rotation is the only way to account for the phenomenon. Spitsbergen was found to have had once, quote, The same luxurious vegetation as now found in the 16th parallel. Unquote. We know that a planetary axis can change its tilt. Earth and Mars have a very similar tilt of about 23 degrees. The axis is currently tilting. This is part of the Milankovitch cycles, which involve small perturbations in the Earth's axial tilt. The mathematicians claim that only an external force can affect this axis. They say there is not enough force within the Earth itself to alter its orbit. Alternately, the Sun might be more variable than we suspect. Did it cool down suddenly 13,000 years ago? Let's look at some theories. First, we have Charles Hapgood's crust displacement theory. This theory would explain why the climate changed so drastically for the mammoths, but unfortunately it is not compatible with expanding Earth theory, which looks to supersede or complement current theories of plate tectonics. Charles simply proposed that the Earth's thin crust can slip around the lithosphere. This could explain why volcanoes sometimes become dormant. Quite simply, they slip away from the hotspot underneath them. But if this happened, why don't we see such movement today? In the mid-20th century, Velikovsky began to propound some outlandish ideas regarding astronomy and history. Venus may have passed by Earth, causing massive tides and disaster. Alternately, his theory involves the entrance of Earth into a strong magnetic field. He believed that when the Earth and Moon periodically enter a region of space with a strong magnetic field, this activates all volcanoes, bringing lava to the surface. It is during such periods that the Moon is covered in fresh seas of lava, only to become geologically dormant in other periods. Then there is the Hollow Earth explanation. In this realm, the mammoths are still living. The Hollow Earth idea offers a place for the mammoths to reside in a warm region somewhere beyond the North Pole, shielded by the warmth of the central sun. Since mammoths can be thawed and eaten, they must only have been recently killed by the ice and cold. They must have wandered away from the hollow centre perhaps wandering too far, downstream, before suddenly being engulfed by the cold. We look to the Viking names and their knowledge of the polar reaches. By venturing into the hollow earth through the northern entrance, we bypass Midgard, the land of mortals, and enter Asgard, land of the gods. This was the home of the mammoths. There are a number of possibilities as to what happened to the maps. At the end of the day, we really don't know what happened to them. On the balance of it though, it looks like maybe it was a comet. Or, one of the ideas I haven't mentioned, it could have been a volcano. Or maybe it was a comet and a volcano. We're still not sure. So anyway, look forward to your comments. Thanks for watching. See ya.